Next on the Pray in Jesus Name show, Dr. Chaps will pray about these important issues. The Department of Justice wants you to never tweet against Islam. Turkey is funding a $100 million mosque in Maryland. Muslims promote female genital mutilation here in America. And Pakistan elects a strict Muslim, but will he persecute Christians? Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Dr. Chaps, Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt. This is the Pray in Jesus' Name show, and here we do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Let's get right to our first story. Judicialwatch.org reports the Department of Justice under the Obama administration is now saying that social media posts that might offend Muslims could also violate their civil rights and be against the law. In its latest effort to protect followers of Islam in the United States, the Obama Justice Department warns against using social media like Twitter or Facebook to spread information considered inflammatory by Muslims who are offended. The DOJ is now threatening it could constitute a violation of their civil rights. They have a civil right to not be offended. The move comes a few years after the administration became the first in history to dispatch a US Attorney General to personally reassure Muslims that the Department of Justice is dedicated to protecting them. In the unprecedented event, Attorney General Eric Holder assigned, excuse me, assured a San Francisco-based organization, Muslim Advocates, that urges members not to cooperate in federal terrorism investigations, that this so-called us versus them environment was accidentally created by the US government. And so law enforcement agents and fellow citizens should not do this because it's unacceptable and inconsistent with what America is all about. Muslims and Arab Americans have helped build and strengthen our nation, Attorney General Holder said after expressing that he is grateful to have Muslims as a partner in promoting tolerance, ensuring public safety and protecting civil rights. But he also vowed to strengthen the crucial dialogue between Muslim and Arab American communities and law enforcement. Evidently, that was the precursor of sorts of the upcoming Tennessee event that will feature the region's top DOJ official, who serves as US Attorney General for Eastern District of Tennessee and an FBI representative. The goal there is to increase awareness and understanding that American Muslims are not the terrorists that some have made them out to be in social media and other circles, according to a local newspaper report. The June 4th meeting is sponsored by the American Muslim Advisory Council of Tennessee. And the area's top federal prosecutor, Bill Killian, will address a topic that most Americans are likely unfamiliar with, even those well-versed in the Constitution, that federal civil rights law can actually be violated by you if you post an inflammatory document against Muslims or against Islam on any social media platform. This is an educational effort, he said, with civil rights laws as they play into freedom of religion and exercising freedom of religion. This is also to inform the public that federal laws enter in effect and what the consequences are if you tweet against Islam. Really? I'm just concerned about this. That's the report came from uh, Judicial Watch. Now let's discern the spirits. Here is the spirit that is in Islam, that perhaps, and from religious education, maybe you've read or maybe you've studied the Quran, that the false prophet Muhammad saw this vision of an angel, inspired him to write the book, the Quran, which often in, encourages its followers to wage jihad or to kill infidels who are non-believers in his established religion. Now, what's the spirit inside of that? I think it's a demonic spirit. And why do I say that? Because the spirit of murder is immoral. And when Muhammad promoted that, he's really manifesting something that's inside of him. That spirit transfers into his followers who then go out 
and kill people like we've seen countless times in the headlines. But here's another spirit that's now inside the United States government, the spirit of tyranny that oppresses free speech by Christians. We should be able to tweet or Facebook any kind of message we want that's critical of another person's beliefs. You know how many times they criticize us? Just Google this phrase, Christianity is, or Christians are. If you Google Christians are, you'll see all kinds of hate speech against Christians, and that's posted on all their social, the anti-Christians version of a social media platform, and we don't complain about that. But when the Muslims get easily offended, they threaten to behead us. And so the DOJ now wants to protect them from being offended by our social media tweets. No, you know what? You're turning the First Amendment upside down in its head. It's a spirit of cowardice, Mr. Holder, cowardice to Islam, and you're caving in to the terrorists, including Al-Qaeda who, who threaten Americans. Here's a scripture from Ezekiel chapter three in verse 18. Uh, and, and I think this is our duty as Christians to go ahead and promote social media tweets that criticize Islam. Why should we do this? Because the Bible commands Christians to do this. When God says to a wicked person, you will surely die, but we do not warn them or speak out to dissuade them, maybe on Facebook or Twitter, dissuade them from their evil ways in order to save their life from God's wrath, then those wicked persons will die for their sins. The spirit of murder will cause some Muslims to go to hell, but God will hold us accountable for their blood. Why does God hold us, the Christians, accountable for the Muslims' wickedness? Because we didn't warn them, we didn't speak out. And now when we do that using social media platform uh, and the government says, oh, you can't do that. You know what? We're gonna obey God instead of you, Mr. Holder. We're gonna continue to warn them of their evil ways and demand that they repent. And if that costs us a reputation or makes them easily offended, then so be it. But at least their blood will no longer be on our hands. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name that you will confront the evil spirit of murder that is inside Islam that you will confront the wicked, that you will persuade them to renounce their sin and welcome a spirit of peace, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of Jesus Christ, the spirit of love to rule and manifest in their hearts. Father, we pray that as we communicate that idea that the US government won't come after the Christians and punish us for our free speech. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break, when we come back, uh, Turkey is building a hundred million dollar mosque in Maryland. Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? It's free. Once your voice heard by multiple congressmen at FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. FactsCongress.com. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Dr. Chaps. This is the Pray in Jesus Name show and we do three things. We report the news, discern the spirits, and pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Our next story comes from the DC Clothesline blog, who reports that Turkey, the nation of Turkey, is now building a hundred million dollar mosque here in America, in Maryland. Hundred million dollars, that's gotta be some big impressive facility. We see a picture here of the, uh, the model of the mosque that they're trying to build. They've already broken ground in this apparently because a couple of weeks ago, President Barack Obama welcomed the Turkish Prime Minister, Recep Tayyip Erdogan to the White House, who also brought the father of one of the Islamic jihadists who was killed in a raid in the Gaza flotilla in 2010. 
the Turkish Prime Minister is known for pushing Islamic Jihad with his statement, the mosques are our barracks, the domes are our helmets, the minarets are bayonets, and the faithful are our soldiers. Upon his visit to the States, he went to Lanham, Maryland to visit the 15 acre site of a hundred million dollar mega mosque called the Turkish American Culture and Civilization Center, which according to the Muslim link, will become the largest and most striking example of Islamic architecture in the Western Hemisphere when it is finished next year in 2014. American Spectator reports, the president is arguably closer to Erdogan than he is to any other foreign leader in the entire world. Last year, Obama himself identified Erdogan as one of the five closest allies among foreign heads of government. On May 15th, Prime Minister Erdogan spoke to hundreds of people at the construction site and he said he would come back for the opening ceremony next year. He warned the audience that there are groups promoting Islamophobia, branding potential critics as paranoid bigots. Erdogan recently said that Islamophobia and Zionism, belief in Israel having a homeland, are equivalent to fascism and anti-Semitism, saying they're crimes against humanity. The liberal blog Mother Jones confirms riots in Turkey are now allowing the destruction of a 19th century Russian Orthodox church as part of an overhaul of a port. Erdogan has also jailed political opponents and members of the media. They don't have first amendment rights in Turkey. They don't allow churches in Turkey. Digital Journal confirms a Greek newspaper that a request by Christians in the Turkish capital of Ankara to construct a church has already been rejected by local authorities. The selected location in Kirkonaklar has instead been allocated to the building of a new mosque. So they took the land away from the Christians. No, you can't build something there. We're gonna put a mosque on your land, Christians. Welcome to Turkey. Well, it's only Islamophobia if they really are trying to kill you. That's my opinion. If they really are trying to kill you, then maybe you should be afraid. I'm just saying. Let's discern the spirits for a moment. Why is the Turkish government full of hypocrisy when they say, uh, let's say, we Americans, we Christians, maybe some of you viewers would wanna help me kick in to raise a hundred million dollars to go build a giant Christian church over there in Turkey. You think they'd let us do that? No, but here in America, we have religious freedom and we welcome false religions to build giant buildings here to celebrate the false prophet and the false teacher, Islam and his Quran. But at the same time, that Turkish government is now forbidding even the people who live in Turkey to build their own church buildings. That is hypocrisy. It reminds me of Matthew 23 when Jesus said, woe to you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, because you shut out the kingdom of heaven from your people, you do not enter in yourselves, nor do you allow anyone else who are entering into the kingdom of heaven to go in. No wonder they can't go to heaven because their leaders forbid them from hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's pray about this. Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name that you would give religious freedom, not just here in America, but in Turkey, throughout the Islamic world, throughout the Middle East, give true religious freedom for the gospel of Jesus Christ to be proclaimed, freedom of speech, for the churches to rise up in power to assemble, freedom of assembly, for the gospel of Jesus Christ and almighty God that you would be worshiped in the way that you deserve freedom of religion. In Jesus name, amen. Let's take a short break. Female genital mutilation being promoted by Muslims here in America. Thank you for joining us in prayer. Stay tuned for valuable info about partnering with Dr. Chaps. Hi, I'm Chaplain Klingenschmidt. I wanna make available to you a very powerful teaching series that we put together just for you. This four hour DVD has an amazing amount of information and this 90 minute audio version on CD is a condensed version. You can have either one just by visiting our website at PrayInJesusName.org or calling us toll free at 866-Obey-God. In the first hour, we will tell you all about the revival that I saw at the Air Force Academy. 
In the second hour, we'll teach you about the importance of prayer and fasting and sanctification for this spiritual battle that we're all in. In the third hour, we'll tell you about the ministry of deliverance and even the miracles and exorcism stories that I saw when I was a Navy chaplain. In the fourth hour, we'll tell you about standing up for religious liberty, how I took a stand and faced my own court-martial, how we won the victory in Congress, 300,000 petition signers. Please visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or call us right now, toll-free, at 866-Obey-God. These are important products for you and your church. God bless you in Jesus' name. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. I want to just give you a heads up. The following segment may not be appropriate for young viewers. That blogger Debbie Schussel is now reporting that, and as Islam spreads across America, so does the horrible practice of female genital mutilation. As America's Muslim population has risen, so have the numbers of FGM, the barbaric, primarily Muslim practice, which is basically giving a clitorectomy and is designed to forever give a woman pain when she has sex. The Muslims do this to uh, calm down a woman's libido or to even uh, discourage women from being loose. So they cut off her private parts. As I already told you, uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics already gave its approval to this practice, barbaric practice, as did the US-based website that approves scientific academic papers. But the American Anthropological Association held a debate on whether FGM was really so bad or unacceptable. Sadly, US law enforcement authorities never make arrests or prosecute FGM. The feds never do and they're only one state criminal case, even though it's illegal in all 50 states. So the barbarism of the Middle East is now in full practice here. If not on paper, it is in practice in real life. Because the United States, even though they have long-standing laws against the practice on US soil, uh, and even in January, they passed a federal law against sending young women outside the country for so-called vacation cutting. However, because nobody prosecutes this, the girls living here in America are increasingly at risk, both at home and abroad, according to research by Sanctuary for Families. The New York City-based nonprofit organization, Sanctuary for Families, which specializes in gender-based violence, said up to 200,000 American girls and women in the United States are at risk of FGM and that the numbers are growing. People in the United States think that FGM only happens to people outside of the United States, but in actuality, people all over America have been through this horrible practice, said a 23-year-old victim who is now an advocate for others. Kids that were born in this country are being taken back home to foreign countries by their foreign-born parents every summer and they undergo this procedure and then they're brought back to America. She was quoted as saying in the report, the study also cited analysis of data between the, uh, from the 2000 census that found in that decade of the 1990s, the number of girls and women in the United States at risk of this procedure, which again involves the partial or total removal of external female genitalia, increased by 35%. That's the news as reported by our friend Debbie Schussel and, and her blog. I'm, concerned about this and let's discern the spirits for a moment. There is a spirit of spousal abuse or female abuse, even uh, child abuse that comes out of Islam. And when the Prophet Muhammad himself had four wives uh, or, or authorizes in the Quran up to four wives, he himself may have had many more than that. Uh, even little girls as, as young as eight years old were married to the false prophet Muhammad. When he encourages uh, that little girls are married off even before they become pubescent, it's really encouraging child rape. And that spirit, not only controlling the young women, but now it's manifesting in their genital mutilation ceremonies. They take scissors or scalpel or whatever to abuse their women in this way. This is 
the demon that's inside of the false religion of Islam. If you don't see that demonic spirit, you're not looking very hard. Look into their hearts and see what this thing is that wants to mutilate their women and young girls. Let's pray against this. And if you're a woman who's been abused in this way, I wanna encourage you to turn. You have a friend in Jesus Christ. Not all men are like this. In fact, Jesus experienced pain, perhaps like, like some of you have. The Bible says in John chapter 19, Pilate took Jesus and scourged him. Jesus was beaten and the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns. They put it on his head and they said, hail king of the Jews. And they gave him slaps to his face. Jesus has been there. He knows what you've been through and you have a friend and let's turn to him in prayer. Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus name that we would turn to you, that these young abused women, not just here in America, but throughout the Middle East, anywhere that Islam abuses women, Father, we pray you would intervene and bless those women. Reveal them your love through Jesus Christ. When Jesus hung and died on the cross, he was beaten, he was tortured, he knows what you're going through. And Father, we're able to turn to you through him because we suffer the way that Jesus suffered. We pray this blessing that he, Jesus would be our God. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's take one more short break. When we come back, Pakistan elects a very conservative Muslim. Is, it, is he gonna persecute Christians? Hi, this is Chaplain Klingenschmidt. I wanna thank you for participating and watching this important message today about defending religious liberty. If there's anything our message proves is that we can make a difference. If we will rise up together as the Church of Jesus Christ, we do not need to be ashamed of the name of Jesus. I need you to participate today in one of four ways. Please visit our website at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign our free petitions to defend religious liberty. Number two, I need you to call us at 866-Obey-God and we, you can sign what they call a fax petition. You don't have to know how to operate a fax machine, but for a nominal fee, we will fax your petition to all 100 senators or all 535 congressmen to defend the right to pray in Jesus' name. Number three, please purchase our DVDs and CDs with important teachings about defending religious liberty around the country. And number four, please donate. These rallies cost us thousands of dollars and we need your donations to stay on the air. Please call us today at 866-Obey-God and do what you can to help. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Dr. Chaps. Our last story today comes from Assist News and they report that the newly elected Prime Minister of Pakistan, Nawaz Sharif, has a history of persecuting Christians. Christian minorities in Pakistan and the UK have demanded the new Pakistani chief should protect and safeguard the rights of all religious, ethnic, cultural, and linguistic minorities of Pakistan. However, Nawaz Sharif is from a conservative Muslim party with ties to Osama bin Laden and they just elected him as president of Pakistan and now he controls the nuclear bomb. Wait, I thought we were trying to keep the nuclear bomb away from people like those who associate with Osama bin Laden. But they elected him. But let's look back at his history. Last, uh, several years ago, Nawaz was previously in power. In 2009 and 2010, the province of Punjab saw a 34% increase in terrorist activity under his rule and a 26% increase in terrorist-related killings of non-Muslims, according to the Pakistan Institute of Peace Studies based in Islamabad. As one example, Christians are now deeply concerned about the safety of a woman named Asia Bibi. She's the mother of five who's being kept in solitary confinement on death row for the crime of blasphemy because she's a Christian, because she believes in Jesus, her story goes like this. Some of the women workers that she was with reportedly have been pressuring Asia Bibi to renounce her Christian faith and accept Islam. And during one of those discussions, Bibi reported, she responded by speaking of how Jesus died for her sins on the cross. She died not only for her own sins, but for the sins of all humanity and saying, uh, what did Muhammad ever do that would compare to Jesus? Jesus died for me, what did Muhammad do? Well, the Muslim women were so offended, they began to beat her. And afterwards, she was locked in a room, according to the 
Re Release International, the mob reportedly formed of and violently abused her and her children. Muslim leaders then charged her with blasphemy and the government sentenced her to death for talking about Jesus and questioning the false prophet Muhammad. Now, the new president, uh, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif could issue a pardon, but he has a personal history of persecuting Christians, so it's likely that he's not going to do that. So this is the news as reported by Assist News and, and a few other sources. Uh, and I'm concerned about this. We need to pray for Ashia Bibi and also for every Christian in Pakistan that they are uh, liberated and given freedom to practice and worship the risen Christ. Here's a scripture from Matthew chapter five. Jesus says, blessed are you who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. So they prosecuted the prophets which were before you. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we pray for religious freedom in Pakistan that you would rebuke the devourer, that you would stop Satan from rising up in the demonic oppression that is not only the false religion of Islam, but now the government who is imposing that on the Christian people. God protect and free Asya Bibi, get her out of jail, take her off a of death row, rebuke father, the government that would allow this kind of oppression and restore religious freedom so that the people of Pakistan can worship according to the dictates of their own conscience, that every person will choose for themselves what religion they wish to be. God, give them this freedom, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I wanna uh, give you a short preview of tomorrow's show. We're gonna talk about the IRS is now saying that the White House pressured them to target conservatives and we have many similar stories like that. In fact, including the testimony of a whistleblower uh, from the Tea Party who is now uh, testifying before Congress. You don't wanna miss tomorrow's show. But would you also do me a favor today and visit PrayInJesusName.org and sign some petitions? God bless you, we'll see you next time. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.